What's up squad, my name is ESO and welcome back to the channel where I show you awesome things in Skyrim. In this video we will be discovering the legend of Snapleg Cave. This is actually a really interesting location for a few reasons. I'm going to leave some of this as a surprise but the other reason is that we're going to get a staff of paralysis here which is one of the most overpowered staffs in the game. And if you're thinking, well ESO, I don't really need that. Well you can actually sell this staff for 4,000 gold and you can get it at level one, making you instantly rich. Now this cave is kind of located in the middle of nowhere. It's directly south from Windhelm and you're gonna find it just here on the map, Snack Leg Cave. There are a few ways to get here but it's quite close to Miss Darkwater Crossing and also Darkwater Pass. But Darkwater Pass is actually a few miles down the mountain. And then Snapleg Cave, which is the location we're at, is quite a steep walk up the mountain, in fact. But a good way to get to it is to go from the Rift Watchtower and then just walk down this mountain here and you'll get to Snapleg Cave. Because as you can see, the view you get when you get here is just insane. Just down there we will see the Atronach stone and then to the left we should be able to see Fort Amor which is that fort over there. But anyway as you can see it's quite a steep climb to get up towards this location and we are almost there now. It's one of those places where if you're not sort of exploring these really sort of uh, out of the way path you'll never actually find it. And there's a few little unique things about this location as well that I want to share with you guys. But here we are this is the cave but we are once again playing the warrior build. And I know you guys love watching me play this build because it's a nice change from the bow build that I usually play. And we have some skeevers here that have been devouring a deer. It's kind of odd. Oh my day! That skeever just went flying. Where's the other one? Oh look there's another one. He's He's being sneaky. Just trying to hide in that bush there. Aerial assault. Boom! He didn't even get a chance to react there. Yeah, we can get their skeever tail and use that to make some poison later. But as you can see, there's a deer here. So I'm guessing this deer might have actually... I'm guessing the skeevers don't really kill deers. But maybe the deer tried to come in here for a drink and just fell off the cliff and landed in this puddle here. I can't think how else it would have died. But we do have a lot of dead goats and bits of sprig in here. So this kind of says to me that there are some hag ravens about. Oh, another skeever. Boom. Uh-oh. Actually, I'm going to turn up the difficulty because I think I'm only on master difficulty here. So let's turn it up to legendary. Make it a little bit harder. Oh, God, I hate the frost spells. Get wrecked, son. And that's why you should always wear armor as a mage, so you don't get one shot. And beheaded. Next time wear a helmet, bro. So we've got a witch here, and these people are obviously conducting spells. So black mage robes, which are pretty valuable, we can sell those at an early level. And there's also a cooking pot here, I wonder if there's anything in here. Nope, we can't cook anything. Okay, so... The first thing we've got is some rare ingredients like frost salts and a skeever's head, which they're obviously like breeding these skeevers. Maybe they killed the deer and then fed fed it to the skeevers to um, brew their potions. But if we come up here on this rocky plinth, we will find a staff of paralysis worth 3,965 gold. Hello, torchbug. Get out of my way. So we can pick that up and I'll show you what that does in a moment. There's also a potion of strength and some soul gem fragments and a death bell. Lots of useful ingredients in this place for crafting poisons actually. This just looks like some creepy ritual site, doesn't it? All right, so we're gonna go through this cave here and continue onwards. But first I'm gonna get out my staff of paralysis. Well actually it's probably a bad example because there are some spiders ahead and we're gonna take those guys out first. Look at this guy's mouth, man. He's a fucking hungry spider. Boom! Get Rex up. And we're going to take his frostbite venom. There are tons of ingredients in here for crafting poison. There's a common soul gem there. That's not for poisons, obviously. So now we're getting into the spider's lair. Oh, God. I hate these spiders. Got the kill cam there. I remember the last dungeon we went into, we had, like, 
kill cam galore on these spiders. There's another one. I don't know why I have like spam kill cam when I'm attacking these spiders, but it's pretty awesome to watch. Especially when you've got this katana. Two-handed katana, which just looks insane. If you guys want to check this build out, then I'll leave a link in the description on how you can make it for yourself. But it's basically a level 30 build that's designed for legendary difficulty. So, what the fuck is that? Jesus Christ! It's a fucking spider. A giant frostbite spider. Get away. Get back. Ah! Ah! Stop feeding on me. I am not your food. I was just walking there casually and thought, okay, there's no enemies. Then I heard, like, the noise of a spider. So as you can see, I'm actually healing myself as this spider does damage to me. So even though he's poisoning me, I'm out healing his damage. So you can just stand there and it works so well for, like, master and legendary difficulty. So this bandit wasn't so lucky, I guess. He got wrecked. Where the fuck? Oh, that spider came from up there. Because I was walking in and I was like, oh, no problem. Can't see any enemies here. And then there's just a spider above my head, which just scared the crap out of me. Okay, so we got some gold from that chest. Hey, look. This guy's doing jazz hands over here. <laughs> that looks pretty cool. Boom. Okay, let's let's go um, into the next area, which is on the right here. And continue down this pathway. So basically this build is about doing consistent damage and also healing yourself while in combat. The main thing you've got to watch out for with this build is mages. And speak of the devil, we actually have some mages up ahead. Oh, it's just a hag, okay. So if I avoid her frost spells, we should just be able to wreck her in close combat. As you can see, she's on a tiny bit of health and now she's running away. Oh my days. Okay, so this location is quite interesting because... Ah, oh, can I unlock this door? You can't. Oh my god, I'm gonna die. Um, let me get my potions out. Potion. I need my health potions. I think I used them up last episode. Resist fire, that's gonna be good. We'll take that and then we'll use our magic spell. Which is going to give us 100% resistance to... Um, their spells. Dragon skin, here we go. So I'm going to use that to finish off this hag and see if I can unlock this Spriggan's door. Because if we can unlock it, this Spriggan will actually help us, which is a pretty cool little unique thing you can do here. So now the Spriggan's out, hopefully she'll go over there and just start wrecking some hag grave. Oh my days! She might need some help. We might need a little bit of help here. Make sure you don't hit the Spriggan, otherwise she will um, become your enemy. There we go, chop that guy up. Or that, that witch even. And now the Spriggan's just wrecking this Hagraven. Spriggan versus Hagraven, let's gonna see who's gonna win here. So this is like the unique little event. You free this Spriggan and unlike any other time, the Spriggan's like, oh, thank you for freeing me. And then she looks awesome, doesn't she? And then she like helps you out in the fight. And this is like the last sort of boss of this dungeon, so let's just speed this along a little bit. Help out this uh, Spriggan, because I want her to win. And after she does win, she just runs off into the distance, which is... You can't heal Hagraven, that's not fair. Stop cheating. Right, finish him off. Go on. I believe. Oh, look, the Hagraven's limping away. Come on, Spriggan. Yes, well done. So as you can see, she's not attacking me, she's just turned invisible. You can't see me. So we can loot this Hagraven here for her feathers. And there's also some soul gems on this ritual altar here. So make sure you grab those as well. Nothing down there. I just want to run back into the next room quickly because I know that we did miss some stuff. Because we kind of uh, chased the conjurer back into that room. So let's just grab those mushrooms. There's also a health potion here. And a dead elk if you want the hide and antlers. Which can also be used to craft some potions. But now we're going back into the Hagraven room. What the fuck? Why is there a guy there? Let's just jump in this water here. Search novice conjurer. There was... Well, how is this novice conjurer dead? He is a scroll of firestorm though which is pretty awesome. 
So there's just a drowned conjurer here. He, we didn't even kill him. I don't even know how he died, in fact. That's strange. Okay, so you've also got an arcane enchanting altar if you want to use it. But we're just going to head on out and get this boss chest here. Boom! Well, at least that's got absorbed 10 points of health, which we can disenchant to learn the effect. Nothing else useful there for us, though. There's also a potent magic point, which uh, isn't that useful either. So let's go outside, and this leads us back into the first room we were in. If you remember, we got the Staff of Paralysis. Anyway, guys, I really do hope you enjoyed this episode. Please do like the video if you did, and you can find a whole playlist of videos like this one down in the description. The whole series is about going around and visiting all the best locations in Skyrim. And you can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. All the links for that can be found in the description. But thanks again for watching, guys. Don't forget that you can receive text and or email notifications from my channel every time I release a new video. Underneath the video, just hit subscribe and then hit the bell next to it. You will now get notified as soon as I release a new video. Welcome to the ESO squad, guys.